Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So let us uh, continue the discussion on turbo machinery and we have uh, so far uh, completed uh, centrifugal compressor and then uh, axial flow compressor and what we have looked at that what essentially turbo machinery is all about and uh, what uh, these compressors like centrifugal and axial compressors and their comparisons not only from the operational point of view also. Uh, towards the end of the previous lecture, we have discussed about the different material uh, that is required uh, for uh, fabrication of different component of this compressor. It is not like that, then one individual material that can be used for uh, designing those uh, components. And in top of that, what we have looked at the characteristics which are very important and then we have also looked at the different design procedure some of them uh, important parameters that affect the design and how to mitigate those issues and in a nutshell one can have an uh, idea about those compressor uh, performance and operation. I mean just to give you a quick uh, refreshing of the memory, if you recall the uh, compressor performance they are limited by two different. Uh, um, limits one is the surge limit and another is the choking limit and within that uh, band compressor has to operate and what happens at the surge limit that uh, when the compressor goes on stall and then it moves to rotational stall and once rotating stall can lead to surge so the, which will lead to a lot of unsteadiness and then choking is that after certain point of time the mass flow rate cannot be enhanced anymore. So now, why we are talking about all these uh, details like compressor and compressor performance and their design because this is one of the important component of the aircraft engine because the, when the air comes in or rather sucked into the system, compressor is the element or rather the component which actually compress the air so that you get proper pressure rise and then after compressor the component which comes into the system is the combustor. And then uh, we already have discussed that what happens in the combustor that you need to have the slow uh, air flow speed there. If your air speed is too high then it would have lot of difficulties in stabilizing the flame and uh, other issues. And then just to extract the power output we have turbine. Now since we have done discussion on compression now we are going to talk about turbine and turbine actually operates in a completely opposite fashion. In a compressor you actually get the proper pressure rise, but in the turbine actually it is an expansion process where you extract the energy out. But having said that at the same time turbine is also a rotating machine or rather turbo machine. So we will uh, now continue our discussion on the turbine and we will look at uh, performance and other stuff. So, what we will start doing that, we will look at the uh, axial flow turbine. So, this is what we are going to talk about, but at the beginning let me again reiterate that fact that turbine also could be two type. That means, it could be axial or it could be radial. So, which is sort of what we talked about centrifugal compressor. So, this could be radial and this could be also axial. So, we will start with the discussion on the axial turbine, then uh, later on we will also touch upon some of the uh, discussion on radial turbine too. So, here in the radial turbine the flow is in flow is in radial direction. So, that is the important thing and axial turbine obviously the flow predominantly 
in axial direction okay so the pre dominantly this is in axial direction okay now radial turbine can provide higher pressure ratios per stage but this will have it can like your compressor it can provide uh, higher prc per stage but multi staging is difficult so that's one of the biggest bottleneck and the thing is that top of that the issue with the single stage is that that single stage cannot handle high m dot so that's another bottleneck because once your mass flow rate is high then the single stage won't be able to handle that now obviously one can note that total mass flow rate is engine is limited by the maximum permissible back number entering the engine now let's say for turbojet uh the mass flow rate is quite high to provide high thrust and m dot is also high for axial like compressor so for turbojet like m dot is high for higher thrust production secondly m dot is high for axial compressor too okay so multi staging is also difficult for radial but works for high prc so the reason here why we're talking about all this is that like uh, compressor also the axial flow turbines are predominantly used in gas turbine industry so here the thing is that sometimes it may possible that even with the combination of radial compressor axial turbines are used instead of radial turbine now in turbine what happens the fluid undergoes pressure drop across the turbine so the turbine the fluid expands or rather the pressure drop takes place so here boundary layer separation is not a concern since this is the fluid is expanding there and it undergoes the pressure drop so the boundary layer separation is not a concern and so the blade design is much simpler so that's the advantage that you have with the turbine so here you don't have the possibility of sort of having stall or such kind of problem that you see in the compressor so this is sort of um, not existence issue in turbine but obviously that doesn't mean then turbines are free of any problems the issue which turbine actually face that high thermal stresses so the blades actually are exposed to high thermal loading or higher thermal stresses because the operating gas is hot gas is hot now if you recall turbine is a component which is connected downstream of the combustor so whatever the combustion product at the hot exhaust gas that comes out of the combustor and comes out to, of combustor to enter in the turbine they are extremely hot so the thermal loading or the thermal stresses are quite high for turbine instead 
uh, of the other issues like boundary layer separation or such things like that. Now, so one can immediately think about the actual blade design. So, that depends on thermal stress and blade cooling rather than aerodynamic consideration like stalling. Okay. So, you can see there is a immediately difference in the approach when you go to compressor to turbine, because the turbine blades are exposed to higher thermal load or thermal stresses and also the cooling of the blades, how efficiently or effectively the cooling is done. So, obviously, they are not considering the effect of stalling is that important in this case and also the other issues. So, the other thing is that the velocity triangle requirements also have to be satisfied. Now, with the invention of high stress, high temperature alloys, blade design has become simpler. Okay. So, they can now operate at the high temperature and that provide the proper engine thrust, weight to thrust specific fuel consumption, TSFC and all this. Okay. Now, we will look at axial turbine stage. So, let us say we just draw an schematic here, mm. so that So, this is the entering of the hot gas, let us say 1, this is sort of a nozzle or stator, then it goes here, this is station 2 and this is the rotor. So, this is exhaust, so this is station 3. So, this is the that is the schematic. Now, as in axial compressor, also axial turbine has a stator and uh, rotor. Here, the stator is essentially the guide vanes, also called nozzles, but in axial compressor, the blade height decreases with axial distance. In turbine, the blade height actually increases with distance. So, there is a completely reverse thing that takes place with both the situation. So, that happens because uh, air expands rapidly in turbine. So, delta P is favorable or favorable pressure gradient. So, which means density actually goes down. So, with respect to let us say x or the distance. Now, to maintain the constant axial velocity, now A has to be increased since mass flow rate is rho A v. So, m dot v by rho A 
Now, as rho goes down, A has to go up. Hence, one can see the fluid passage area has to be increased. Okay. Now, how do we maximize the turbine work? So, it can be now maximizing turbine work. So, this can be limited by two cases. Number one, maximum pressure ratio. Okay. So, that means delta T naught by T naught 1. So, maximum work is directly proportional to T naught 1 or 2 allowable blade speed u, which is limited by rotational stresses at the operating condition. Okay. So, here the one can think about the boundary layer is well behaved. So, there is no issue such like boundary layer separation. So, what happens at high the, uh, high the pressure drop or rather higher the delta p pressure drop. So, the smaller the losses that is number one. The second separation leads to great losses in turbine efficiency. Now, high turning of the flow in the passage is highly uh, in highly twisted blade may cause some zero or adverse pressure gradient in some passage. So, therefore, boundary layer may separate in those passages at high rotational speed, but separation leads to greater losses in turbine efficiency, but that is very rare, but still these are some of the things. So, now with that we will look at the elementary theory. Okay. So, let us uh, consider a gas entering a row of nozzle blade with P 1, T 1 and V 1 and it leaves at station 2, P 2, T 2 and V 2 where P 2 would be less than P 1. T 2 would be less than T 1 and V 2 would be greater than V 1. Okay. Now, the rotor, uh, rotor blade angle that is beta 2 is such that gas enters the passage smoothly. Now, after being deflected and, for, and after further expansion in rotor blade passages, gas leaves at P 3, T 3 and relative velocity W 3 at angle beta 3. So, gas leaves at P 3, T 3, W 3 and at beta 3. So, let us see how that looks like. So, we have this nozzle blades. So, the velocity triangle would be like this. Okay. So, this is B, this is alpha 1, this is B z 1. Now, 
we have this rotor blades. So, here the velocity triangle has this, this So, this, this, this. So, this is u, this is alpha 2. So, this is v 2, this is beta 2, w 2, b z 2 and this component is v theta 2 and then finally, it goes like this. So, u w 3, this is beta 3 v 3 So, this one is alpha 3 and this is v theta 3 and this component is v z 3. So, So, that is now in a single stage turbine V 1 is axial which means alpha 1 0 V 1 is V z 1. Okay. So, now if the stage is part of multi stage uh, then V 1 equals to V 3 and alpha 3 which is means the same blade shape used in successive stages. So, same blade shapes used in successive stages which means alpha 1 equals to alpha 3. Now, consider the flow at the mean radius. Now, if we super superimpose the velocity triangle, let us say superimpose the velocity triangle at 2 and 3. So, which will look like we have this component now like this and that goes here. So, this is u. So, So, this is u, this is w 2, this is v 2. Now, this is point A, this is let us say point D, this is point B, this is C and this is alpha 2. And this is w 3 and this is v 3. 
So, so this component is essentially is V z 2 which is V z 3 is V z. So, this component is like that and this is alpha 3 and this guy is the beta 3 that is beta 3. So, and this is alpha uh, so there is beta 2. So, you can see that V z 1 with that alpha 1. So, V 2 will have that alpha 2 and W 2 will have the beta 2. So, this is beta 2 and this is W 2. So, this is beta 3, this is W 3. Okay. So, here what we can say that delta V theta is uh, V theta 2 plus V theta 3. Okay. Now, let us say consider for consider for leading edge. Okay. So, A B by B C that is tan alpha 2 and B D by B C tan beta 2. So, what we get A B minus B D which is B C tan alpha 2 minus tan beta 2. A B minus B D is U which is B C is V Z which is tan alpha 2 minus tan beta 2. Now, similarly trailing edge the triangle would be slightly different. So, this is W 3. So, this is V 3. So, this one is beta 3 this one is alpha 3, this is A star, D star, U, B star, C star. Now, at trailing edge A star B star by A star C star is tan beta 3 and a star d star by a star c star is tan alpha 3. So, a star b star minus a star d star which is u equals to a star c star tan beta 3 minus tan alpha 3. This is v z tan beta 3 minus tan alpha 3. So, since u y b z equals to tan alpha 2 minus tan beta 2 and at the same time we can write that because this is at the leading edge and this is at the trailing edge. So, we can also write tan beta 3 minus tan alpha 3. So, this is what 
we get when we combine this triangle. Now, we will continue this um, uh, discussion uh, in the next lecture.